Before we start, um, lesson five from session seven, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift of preaching. We thank you for the office of a preacher. And we thank you, Lord, that you are leading us, guiding us, helping us when we need to preach, to bring the message of the Bible to the people in church, in congregation, in the houses. Glorify your name in and through us. This we pray, and we specially pray for today, the time we take to glorify your name in this, in Jesus' name. Amen. We gear our attention to sermon preparation. Too many preachers are in front of a congregation without proper preparation, which is absolutely despicable. It is wrong. God has chosen you for a very, very specific reason, namely to preach the gospel. And to preach the gospel means that you have to know the gospel through and through. So if you open your Bibles and look at it and say, this is the text I'm going to preach on. Don't stop. Go on. Do what the Lord wants you to do. But before you can do that, you have to have preparation. Many preparations are long past. For example, you learned how to read and write. And you may say amen to that. But there are still millions all over the world who do not know how to read and write. How would you preach a gospel of the gospel message if you don't know how to read and write. So that is one thing. The other thing is language. Your parents prepared you for a lifelong use of a language. That's also preparation. You cannot function in society if you don't understand the language. So you need to have a knowledge of the language of the people you're working with. The people in the same society as where you are. So you have to, there's no question, you have to learn the language. And the same thing goes for the biblical language. You cannot, you cannot preach a message if you don't bring the message in a language people understand. When you make an application, people need to understand that's the application. That's what I have to do. That's what others have to do. So there's an absolute necessity to prepare, to look at the text, to determine what the text says to the original people. And then, what does the, the text say to us today? What do we do? How can we apply it? What, uh, what are the implications for us, for me, for, for the, the congregation today? If you don't do that, if you're unprepared, you will never get that, the real thing, the real thing, not just the thing of the moment, but the thing of what God installed in you. God wanted to do something in your life. To some people, 
It's probably the scariest moment in their life that they would go in front of a group of people and they have to give an exp explanation to any audience. That can be your class, the class you were in in high school. And one of the things you have to do is prepare a talk, explain something. So if you do it in high school, I mean, it would be completely ridiculous not to do it in church. And then you say, well, the Holy Spirit will lead me. Yes, the Holy Spirit will lead you. Well, you have the, uh, you have the, uh, the opportunity to have the Holy Spirit leading you hours and hours and hours and hours during preparation. Or you have the opportunity to let the Spirit lead you in 25 minutes you talk in front of your audience. So I think it's clear that you have to do a thing that is absolutely good as a preparation time. Preparation with the Bible, with the Holy Spirit. By the way, the Holy, the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. So when you go into your Bible, you, you meet the, the Holy Spirit every time, all the time. Okay, so it's sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it's hard, but well, we have to do it. There is, um, yeah, you know, um, there is this pressure for the uh, uh, for the preacher uh, with a question: Is my sermon relevant to the people? You can preach a message. And nobody understands you. Even if you, if, the, if you use the same language as the people know, you can still preach something people do not understand. So you have to do something other, something better. It has to be relevant, it has to be interesting, it has to be applicable. In this lesson, we will deal with the preparation to preach and putting together an outline to use in the pulpit. If you don't do that, uh, you will end up with, uh, uh, with repetitions, repetitions and repetitions. You will say every time again and again the same thing. You know, I was in a church and uh, in, in that church it was a an, an, old, an elderly man, an old man, he was 92, I think, uh, and he was preaching. So I heard him once, I heard him twice, I heard him three times. So you know what happened? I had the sermon every time again, the same sermon with another text. Sometimes he did not even bother to read the text. So that is not what you need to do. You need to do something else. So there are five points we're going to look at. First is, um, where do I get or where do you get sermon ideas? Secondly is, when do you start preparing? Number three, seed thoughts. Number four, what if nothing is coming together? And five, the outline. Let's look at number one first. Uh, where do you go to get sermon ideas? Well, uh, there are possibilities available. Because a lot of sermons have been preached. And a lot of outlines have been, um, been published. So you can... Go for one of those outlines, which is interesting to do. I'm not saying you should not do that, because I'm saying that it's a good idea to do. Look at other preachers, or listen to other preachers when they preach about the same text as you're going to preach. On the internet, at YouTube, you find a lot of material. On many, uh, many websites, you have 
innumerable numbers of sermons. They have websites that are specialized in it. You take those and you get ideas. If you don't have an idea, you can still start with an idea anyway. Okay, so let's go. Where do you get ideas? The first and foremost, most important, and I'm not saying the only one, but I'm saying the most important one, that is personal study. Study the Bible through and through and through and through, so that you will know what to preach on. You will know what to say. You will have good ideas. But it's not enough to have good ideas. You have to be able to bring them. To do so, you have to go through the text in your personal devotions, your time alone with God. The time you need to, um, to use to know God better, to know the Lord better, to know His Word better, to know His Church better, to know your friends and, and, and fellow uh, congregants of a, of, a, of, a, of a church. You need to you need to be able to to link what you are saying to those people. But you have to do it, and you have to know it through and through. So you have to go through personal devotions. How do you how do you do personal devotions? Well, uh, personal devotions is part of, of the Christian life. So if you want to uh, get involved in personal devotions with the system, we have this uh, very well-established system of... Uh, what we call the uh, the minutes that changed the world. It's uh, in an hour's time, you go to 12 different parts of this system. Every time again, you take five minutes for one part, multiply by 12, and you have a whole hour. Praying is one of them. Uh, listening to God, communion, communicating with God, praising God, singing, uh, praying, praying the Bible, all those things. There are many more, but I'm just giving some of them. You find them with every home for Christ. Uh, which is the, uh, the, the, the leading uh, the, the leading organization in the world on evangelism. They have reached many years ago 100 million 100 million responses to the gospel. Do you understand what I'm saying? 100 million. So, yeah, so you can have, you can be part of that and you can do your personal devotions. Inside the, the personal devotions, you have a time of Bible study. Study the Word of God. Look it, read it, apply it. That's what you have to do as a preparation. And that is one of the uh, sources for a sermon idea. Another one is books. Read books. Read commentaries. Read summaries of books. Read. So as much as you can. The whole library is filled 
with, uh, with books in, in several languages. So you have the chance. Please go. So that's what you have to do. Books. Uh, go to all the sermons. That's what I said before. Listen to all the sermons. Um, try to um, try to react to sermons. Sometimes you say, "Oh, no, man, that, that's not what uh, that's not what the text is saying." That's when you are. That's when the Holy Spirit is working in you. That's when you feel the difference between what a preacher's meaning is and what the biblical meaning is. Where do you get your sermon ideas? Well, sometimes there is a specific need in the church, a specific need in the congregation. Or someone comes up with an idea and says, you know, I would like you to preach on something like that. For example, the second cleansing of the temple. And then you have to go and look what the second cleansing of the temple is. Okay, so that's what you have to do. Meeting a need. Number two. When do you start preparing? Okay. Biblically spoken, and I know you know the text, you have to be always prepared. Prepared to, to speak about the gospel, but to build up a sermon, you also have to be prepared. You have to listen, you have to see, you have to watch, you have to to uh, converse you know you have to be on your way so that's prepared uh, you will develop your own routine over time uh, some people when they start preaching uh, they write a whole book about the sermon and that's fine. And then they pluck some materials out of it to have a sermon. That's very fine. That's their way. Others look into a text and say, okay, I can divide the text in one, two, three points so I can preach it. Sometimes uh, people have another idea. I've, I've met a uh, preacher and he... Uh, He's always working on his telephone, you know, on his smartphone. He's looking things up, he's looking things in, 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 the, in the internet era. We have to be ready because many people have internet or have a link to internet or can have some time on the net. So that's what we have to do. That's we have to be prepared. We have to develop our own routine. I will give you um, a routine of someone who gave me four points. He said, you know, start thinking about the sermon ideas a few days ahead. Don't do that on Saturday evening when you have to preach on Sunday morning. During the week, the day before, start putting together an outline. That's on Saturday. You have to have a Saturday outline before you go to Sunday. The day you preach, especially when you have an evening preachers, finish the outline the same day, in the afternoon before you go to the, to the pulpit. I usually am still tweaking or adding notes until I preach. When you preach, don't add. Before you preach, add. Okay, number three, seat thoughts. Write down sermon ideas. If it is not a full outline, B. Use a wide margin or interleaf Bible to jot down some notes. That's interesting. Um, you can, of course, you can you can use it with a with a simple. Uh, sheet of paper putting it in between 
the pages of the Bible. The thing here is, it's more a structured way. It's, uh, uh, it's doing that all the time. For me personal, that didn't work. But I know people who can just, they have one Bible with them and they have 100 sermons in it. No, it, it depends on how you do it. Um, the, the other thing you can do is underline things in your Bible. Color things in your Bible. I've seen a, a Bible that's completely colored. It means uh, there's a, a, a color for separate uh, issues, separate uh, items in the Bible, and so they color everything. That, that, that's fine, if, I mean, if you can work with it. For me, that is opposite to what I like. I like a blank Bible. Nothing written in it. Nothing, uh, but, but if, I mean, if you have a study Bible and you can use it that way, that is fine. But the best thing to do is use the same Bible you use in your preparation on the pulpit. Okay, um, create a filing system or a notebook. So, you know, when you think of something, you write it down and you bring those notes all together. Uh, yeah, number four, what if nothing is coming together? I know you have those those weeks and you know you're going to preach and, and, and you know all your Bible study is is, is, is here and there and, and somewhere else you, you find pieces but you don't find a line you don't find an outline you don't find a specific meaning or a specific issue a specific subject so what do you do? Well, what weapon has God given us? Pray. So pray. Pray until something happens. That's what you have to do. While you are praying, or in the time you are praying, for example, you need to preach on Sunday morning and you have... On, on Thursday, you don't know, you don't have, you have no clue what you're going to talk about. Pray, but also study, study the Bible, because something is hidden there. And that comes up, but only if you study enough. Sometimes your approach to, a, to the subject is the wrong one, but you don't know. You think that's the right one to do. Stop sit down, wait, and then take a different approach. Try to look at the same thing from a different angle. Try a different sermon altogether. Don't stop, uh, but go on, you know. Say, uh, I had a, a five points, but seemingly that's not good. Uh, why is it not good? Because the text is giving me only three points. So I'll go for a three point. You see, that is how you work with, with the text. It is preparing you to, to make sure that you understand. Another thing you can do is look at your own notes or even uh, your own outlines from before. That is, you have to keep the outlines. Uh, I have boxes full of sermons. I have a whole range of books on outlines for myself. I've published even books on sermons. So there's, that's the way to look at it, the way to go for it. 
Um, so number five, the outline. I know that some of some of the people who say, oh, I, I don't use outlines, I use my text. And that's fine. I mean, if that is what uh, God wants you to do, sure, no problem. But for, for a general rule, it's good to have an outline in front of you rather than the whole text. Because when you, you, you have the whole text, you tend to read. And, and, and reading is, is not exactly the same thing as preaching. So um, you, you need to be able to use the outline and to pinpoint things and then work it out from the outline. Um, another thing, you cannot just take an outline from someone else because every every preacher has his own way of looking at it. So whatever the original outline from someone else is, it may not work for you. Well, it, it actually, it will not work for you because you have to make your own outline. Experience and experimentations will determine how your outlines look like. You know, you have to to make your own outline, and and then when you look at outlines you made yourself, a system develops, and that's your outline system. Uh, I, 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 on the other hand, you have preachers who have problems with following your outlines. And so they start talking about whatever except the real thing you were supposed to be talking of. So outlines are absolutely personal. If you can't work with an outline, I don't think you, you can be a good preacher, but that's another thing. Outline is a backbone of your sermon. Don't worry so much about the form when starting. Focus on the substance. So, when you start studying a certain thing in your Bible, or a certain past passage in your Bible, or one verse in your Bible, or one, um, one phrase, stay with it. Of course, there are many, 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 many more things you can you can talk about. Absolutely right, and I'm not saying you don't have to do that, but not during your sermon. Okay. Okay. So there are five points, five steps for the sermon. Uh, number one is. The attention step or the challenge. Make me want to listen, I dare you. There are elements, you know, humor, pointed questions, uh, startling statements, rhetorical questions, illustrations, visual aids, true stories, all those things are in there. And so you need to do certain things. That is what you're going to use. <clears throat> that's, sorry, that's number one. Number two, um, the need. So the need step. We have the attention step and now we have the need step what needs to be done and why elements statements of fact warnings of danger importance of the topic illustrations ramifications actual present tense situation so that's what you have to do what's we that's what that's how you you work on that soon number three the satisfaction step What do I do to satisfy the need? Elements, statements, 
explanations, demonstrations, practical experience, meeting, uh, meeting objectives. You know, you need to be able to bring that. And then you have the number four, visualization. Can I see myself enjoying the doing of this? Can I see myself enjoying the doing of this? Elements, describing benefits of doing. Describe consequences of not doing. Contrasting positives and negatives. And number five, the action. So the, the challenge here is the action. What do I do? Okay, what must I do? Now I should, and how I should do it, sorry. So what must I do and how should I do it? Elements, challenge, appeal, summary, quotation, key verse, illustrations, uh, inducements, personal in intention, clear steps to success. So now you have the five elements or five steps Leonard Fox and Bill Schreider uh, has given us. So what you have to do is take care of this. Okay? Take this on board. You find all these materials in your manual. So there's, there's no need for you to write them down and from this uh, uh, from this PowerPoint presentation. The last thing I want to talk about is what we call the home assignment, the home housework or the homework for you. Uh, this is a, uh, let me say it's, it's a project for yourself. Um, that, you know, if you need to understand more of the use of an outline, this will give you a good thing because it's outlined in, in preaching uh, listen to the biblical philosophy of work. That's what you find in the under, uh, the, the, the bottom line here gives you a YouTube channel, a YouTube place where you can find the explanation. Listen to it. I'm not saying you have to do it, but it's good for you if you can do that. Because a lot of things you will never be able to to perceive yourself because this is really a God-given gift to each one of us. So I hope God will bless you with this, uh, this lesson, this class. So this was lesson number five, but session number seven. God bless you.